Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's March 20th, 2022, and I'm struggling to make this video. And and I think the reason is that it's hard for me to be uh, to be clear and concise and share with you something that's personal uh, to me as well. Uh, a couple of days ago, I posted a video about uh, I suspect uh, that there will be a uh, food sh shortages and uh, and I uh, played clips from the All In podcast and there are just tons of evidence out there that we're, we're potentially getting into a scenario like this and I had some really great comments and that video got a lot of hits. Kate had talked about uh, in some of her comments how she's been uh, composting and, and working with her neighbors doing more composting and and, and um, suggestions about uh, growing microgreens, even if you're in, uh, in an apartment or a small place in the city. Uh, certainly you could be growing um, uh, salad greens, that sort of thing. Uh, and y you know, there's lots of valuable information in the comments uh, in each one of these videos. And, and I, I think that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, a video that I posted yesterday, uh, well, actually I guess it, it went up today on the 20th that I that I created yesterday and that was basically a little bit about uh, the garden tour of 2022 which is nothing's in the actual gardens yet except for the perennial uh, plantings that are there from last season and we took a walk th from the west garden to the central garden to the eastern garden plot and we started off in the work area looking at some of the seedlings and, and the main topic that I wanted to share was well, things are changing again. So uh, three years ago, we cut back a significantly in the amount of seedlings that we started. Uh, two years ago, we cut back. Last year, we cut back. And this year, we're cutting back even further. And some of it is because of so much waste and extra time that we spend doing it, materials that we use. So the soilless mixture, the, all, the, all the time and energy that gets put into it and we end up composting or using that in our perennial beds or feeding the wildlife. And Cabo had commented, geez, why not, uh, why not open this up to friends and family or potentially community, people who, uh, who may want to do work in exchange for, for food and all. And these are absolutely fantastic. And that was something that I was trying to convey uh, when I made the video that, po that posted today, the garden tour. Um, and the thing that's hard for me to communicate is, uh, is my own personality and how it's challenging for me to, to communicate with other people well, uh, other than like on this format. So to give you an example, uh, you know, uh, in, in, I've always seen myself as my way of contributing to society would either be to inform, to inspire, to educate, or to, uh, to share my skills in a way that could help someone out. I don't have the empathic natural abilities that Thea has. Thea is the hugger, uh, even with her, all of her clients that, uh, throughout her career. Uh, she's always been the team builder, the people pleaser, the, the go-to person when somebody's got a problem they want to talk with her. Uh, she's the light in everybody's rainbow that makes that makes the, the mist sparkle and all. And I'm very blessed that she's uh, partnered with me in life. So we're, I'm sort of the opposite. Those empathic uh, people reading skills... Uh, uh, I never was born with. Uh, it's something that I've had to learn and I've struggled with understanding why someone is responding or they're experiencing the emotions that they're having and all. Certainly I, I can understand when someone is physically hurt, but with social interactions, it's never been uh, natural to me. I've had to learn these uh, over time. And I don't care for small talk at all. I, I, I would much rather dig a ditch than sit around with people and talk about nothing of importance or, you know, <laughs> and when I say important, certainly people's feelings matter significantly and, and what people are doing and thinking matters. 
but unless I feel that I can help in some way, I want to move on and do something else. And false me if you will for that, that's, that, that is my, um, my base case. Most people realize that I'm, I'm dyslexic. You know, I didn't learn until I was 28 years old. There's been enough videos that I've made about this. And, and, uh, and so I see things differently. I see things in, um, especially as in uh, boxes of information that have, uh, that have very key elements to them and how they're related and everything's connected through a web, uh, through a network in a sense, where uh, information from this box may relate to these next five boxes. Um, and, and that's how my mind works and, and, uh, and it's, it's a challenge for me to, to delve into the world that most people are in. I'm the square peg and the world is round and I don't fit into social uh, gatherings well. So my abilities for working with friends and family, even, you know, my children and grandchildren know that I'm just not someone, you know, when they, when we're sitting down a meeting, I'm going to talk to them about, you know, economics or, or gardening or politics or whatever it may be, but not to bash a politician necessarily, but to, to talk about the, the, uh, you know, the logical fallacies in their statements or whatever. Um, so I'm not someone who, who feels comfortable talking about things that uh, experiences that don't have a direct impact on their health and well-being whether it's their physical emotional mental well-being uh, I'm more interested in fixing problems or achieving goals those sorts of things it's just part of my innate innate um, characteristics or desires so Thea and I complement each other in, to a great extent where hopefully with our, with, with potentially developing more of a Facebook or uh, Instagram, uh, I'm not sure of all the different social media things that we could potentially do, but since I'm almost repulsed by what I see there, but I can see the value of sharing what we're growing with people and especially finding people who are truly in need and that could benefit from our excesses. And I wouldn't mind working harder and producing more if I knew it were going to people who, who were truly in need. Uh, so those are my thoughts about that. Uh, for, our, for our friends and family, like my friend community uh, isn't very large at all. My family community is very, very small, although I have brothers and all, but I'm I'm not close to my brothers and their their families and so on. Um, it's just that I never developed those those uh, those relationships that are more typical to other people. Uh, so, but Thea does have many friends, but they're mostly clients and coworkers and people that she's worked with and 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 all. But she isn't necessarily as social as some people are who are very much into social gatherings as well. So the reason I'm sharing this is to give a better understanding of where I'm coming from. And Thea can share her perspectives of where she comes from. Uh, but we're here and one of the things I tried to do in yesterday when I created the video that was posted today on the 20th is to say that, geez, if there are people that wanted to come and uh, even if they're not in, in financial uh, issues and they, like I've, one of the neighbors one day said, geez, it seems like you got a lot of berries there. And I said, yeah, I said, we got way more than we can potentially pick. And, uh, and I said, well, if you want to come over and pick some, I'll tell you what, you get to keep one third of whatever you harvest. You can come over as often as, as you want. Just uh, uh, harvest two thirds, uh, leave it for us, and you take one third. And that and she never took me up on it. And there's been other situations similar to that. Based on my um, my perspective, and I could be off. Uh, I thought that that was very fair. Uh, the it's not just the financial and time but the energy that goes into, you know, whatever the, the plants are. Uh, 
you know, it's, and in this area, people don't value organically grown food like we, are, we, we value it. People aren't as interested in nutrient density. Uh, people aren't familiar with the difference between um, traditional uh, industrial agriculture and the use of herbicides and, and insecticides and, and using nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium fertilizers. They see that as being no different than organic. Uh, they don't see that there's an advantage of organic over that. So that just happens to be based on the, um, I'll say the information, education, uh, communications in the communities around us. I've tried selling, you know, I, you know you've seen uh, with all the seedlings that we grow each year, I have hundreds if not thousands of, of you know, San Marzano tomatoes that, that I've tried to sell over the years and never had anyone buy any of our uh, seedlings, you know, sell them for a dollar or even 50 cents when it was getting real close there, never had anyone take us up on it. So it was a lot of energy and resources going into doing that from the seed saving to the uh, storage to the, uh, the the soilless mixture that we start the seeds in all of those things those steps they all add up and it just isn't a value to do those things and certainly then when we get things into the gardens uh, like I've mentioned in the last video we could go from single row uh, gardening and do more of uh, market gardening where you're really trying to maximize uh, the amount of produce and have more turnover. So you can get out of a single um, raised bed like we have uh, here. Well, geez, there's, there's, there's some, you may be able to get three, two to three crops per season out of each one of those permanent raised beds if you're a market gardener. Or if you're a, uh, a home gardener, you could do square foot gardening, uh, where you're really maximizing the density of, of plants being produced in a limited area to get more bounty out of the area as well. So there's all sorts of possibilities, uh, and I never want to completely hoard everything to ourselves, especially for those people in need. Uh, I want to share. Um, but the opportunity has to present itself. I've tried in several ways to to reach out, although I don't have the the natural skills and desires to reach out uh, the way some people may get on the phone and and start calling people and say, "Hey, I've got you know 50 head of broccoli that's got to come out in the next three days, uh, or it's going to go bad and get composted." Uh, I my time is, my mind is always ticking and I'm moving on to the next thing is, is what I'll say. Is that the right thing? It may not be, but it's the way that I do things. So I really do value everyone's comments and questions uh, that are left below these videos that I think it's, it stimulates me to think. I'm not trying to, to make this video to make excuses for myself. I just want to share who I am and maybe understand a little bit more about the why. The why of why we do what we do uh, is more important than the who and the how and, and so on, as in my opinion. It's the why. What stimulates this person to do what they're doing? Let's see if we can address the underlying uh, why reason if we find it not optimal. So with that, I think I'll end this video. I just wanted to share this challenging topic. This is the third time I've tried recording this, but um, I think this one's good to go. I look forward to any comments uh, or suggestions uh, below. I'm always interested in your feedback. Thanks so much for watching and have a super fantastic and safe day. And think about this, these coming seasons. Take good care of yourselves. Plan for challenging times. Bye-bye now.